Hi everybody and welcome to another Muse Machine video. Turn on your Comfy UI servers and reload the workflow from last time because today we are going to take a look at the different style possibilities we have in Z Image Turbo and also the methods we can apply to get more variations our images because if you have already some experience with Z Image Turbo you may see that the prompt coherence is very very strong and good but sometimes it's a little bit lacking of variations which is also an advantage because sometimes you would simply like to continue with the one design you just created. However, I would say without further ado, let's go to our screen sharing and first of all let's have a look where Z -Image, Z Image Turbo is currently placed. And here we are in Hugging Face, on Hugging Face and the Artificial Analysis Image Arena leaderboard with our very first, yeah, first place model, Nano Banana Pro 3. Um, yeah, still there since November. And also the new Flux models, they also did not um, pass the Google, yeah, I would say the Google, yeah, Google winning model. But the question is, where is Z Image Turbo? Well, currently it is on the 10th place here, but the ELO score, they are all very close to each other. Now, one may say, well, um, with Z Image Turbo, we are maybe not that good here on the 10th rank. But if we click here on the open weights, we see that it is currently on the first place, even surpassing the Flux 2 Dev. Although we have to consider that the Z Image Turbo license is purely Apache 2.0, while for the Flux model, for example, you need to have a license for commercial usage. It is also important to know that we are now working with the Z Image Turbo model, but the full model is still to be released. They were, yeah, the guys from Alibaba, they were claiming that they will release it soon. I think currently there is like no real update when it will be, but of course we are tracking this for you. And as, as yeah, as, if it's being released, we will publish here a video, of course, as quickly as possible. So, of course, it is very important to note that. And it will be also interesting how the full model will perform. Um, one cannot really estimate where it will be placed, but of course, it would be nice to see if this would even surpass the current uh, proprietary models, maybe going even into the top three rank list. I simply don't know. Anyway, I would suggest we are going now to ConfUI and have a look at our workflow from last time. And here we are with our um, yeah, prompt we created last time in the very end of the last video, the blue jay sitting in a tree during sunset. The tree is in, photo, uh, is in front of the ocean in a photorealism style. Now this looks, I would say, quite photorealistic. We have here currently a fixed seed. The steps are set to 9, CFG to 1.0. I changed the sampler name to dpmpp2m and the scheduler is still set to simple. Now what I have here is a small note. Um, don't worry, I put all the notes here into the description you find below. And maybe some kind of community call. If you have other nice styles or so, then please add them in, or put them in the comments so that we have some kind of maybe a repository or we can create a repository with all the different styles that are inherently stored in Z Image Turbo. I would suggest we go a little bit through them and see what they can achieve and where the limits are. So actually now I already loaded all the model, uh, the model and also the clip part. So there is like no waiting time regarding the loading. Here the digital art style. We have the Blue Jay hopefully now in some art, digital art thingy. Well, it's not um, because, yeah because it sometimes really depends on the seed. So some prompts are not working well, some work. So for example, if we take, for example, the same here with the digital illustration, you will see that it will work. And that's also a little bit sometimes a gamble if certain things are being understood. So digital art style sometimes works, sometimes not. But digital illustration, on the other hand, works a little bit better. And there we see the result, how it looks like. So just be aware that sometimes a simple um, word changing in the embeddings lead to complete different results. Digital art style doesn't work really properly, but the digital illustration does. Here, for example, we have also the pixel art that also runs perfectly. And you know, these are all the classical stuff, also black and white, water, watercolor, pencil drawing, and so on. I really tested them out. Also the flat, flat color style we have here, we can take a look. But first, let's enjoy the pixel art. Looks pixely to me, but of course not 
um, with perfect squares, right? It's more like the style. So um, yeah, if you zoom in here, you see yeah, there are some artifacts here in the pixel art, but I think this is pretty fine. Pixel art, maybe you can really work more with a, with a filtering afterwards, with post processing. Not, not everything needs to be AI generated. Flat color style uh, applies well for the ocean and the sky. The blue J is always a little bit too much in the focus, so the number of colors is a little. These are a little bit too many colors um, for me to be, to be honest. But we can also use some more creative things, like for example the stacked paper card art. So yeah, paper cut that has been stacked into some kind of 3D visualization. We will see that this also works nicely, and it also gives us a good bridge to the let's say real world if you would like to have some cutouts or so. But of course, here again, the blue J is a little bit too much in the focus. The crayon drawing was also something that worked quite nicely. Um, we can just check it out. Let's um, remove here always the new line and then let's run it. And also the next thing I would like to test is also the stained glass art. But as always, the blue J is very much in the focus. So here the crayon art, also here the feathers are a little bit too much detailed for crayon art. But yeah, maybe the thing is that the blue jay is um, is like the, the the main the main subject the main subject here in our image. It's maybe possible that the model is really focusing a lot on this topic, and yeah, it's maybe a little bit difficult for the model to draw it in a more simple simplified childish way. Let's say here the stained glass, like you may know it from historical buildings or so. Looks also pretty cool as an idea. Uh, I like that. Interesting is also to see that in the photorealism we have always mostly like a blurred background and here it's now really stayed sharp and focused so it's not like that the stained glass elements of the background are somehow, um, yeah, somehow, how to say, the, somehow blurry or so. It looks really properly done. And last but not least, we can also create a clay style and see what happens here. So let's have a look um, if we get some kind of clay figure. And, and there we are. And yeah, the blue J, interestingly, is now a little bit more simplified. So this looks also, let's say, manageable with clay. So this is, I think, also very cool inspiration. Maybe if you are also a teacher or so, not, you know, yeah, it's good for creators, but this kind of thing is good for teachers maybe. If you think um, this could be applied for, for your art lessons or so, I think you can do a lot of great things with that. The thing is, I would suggest we go back to our photorealism image and I would like to show you another thing that is a little bit sometimes an advantage and a disadvantage at the same time with set image turbo depends on the perspective you have. Because let's generate the image and I would say let's randomize the image and I would suggest to run it a few times. Um, yeah, maybe like three times or five times why I speak a little bit. So all the images we generate now, you will see that the blue J is always in the same light settings. The um, configuration is almost the same, just slightly variations. The blue jay also looks to the left all the time. It has its feathers, um, yeah, it's standing still, let's say. And yeah, the variation, there is some variation, but it's not as you would say as a human, there's a strong variation. It's not like there's a big wave in the background or humans surfing or a fence shown and or something like that. Regarding the um, blurry background, that's something we will cover in the next video. So uh, I hope it's okay for you to stay with the two topics today. But now I would like to add something to increase these variations a little bit. And for this I found a, um, a note, a rather unknown, unknown note. It's called Seed Variance Enhancer and that's basically also the name you find in the manager tool. Now I don't need you to show how to install it, right? It's always here on the upper left and then manage extensions. I have shown in the previous videos how to do it, so if you're not aware of that, just go back to the previous ones. Now here, let's first connect the conditioning and then go to the positive part. Now, what's, what is this? I would suggest to really to understand what's going on here, let's go to the official repository of Seed Variance Enhancer. So, and if you were 
if you were a little bit aware, you have seen that I had two tabs already open and this is the Seed Variance Enhancer with, I think, uh, where is it? Oh yeah, 71 stars. So it's um, rather unknown, I would say, and also kind of new. And it is, yeah, it is what it is. It's, it's written here what it does. It's a Seed Variance Enhancer node designed to add diversity to the outputs of Z Image Turbo. So it compensates for low seed variance. Now, here's a little bit of the usage. So I would strongly suggest to go through it. I will add the link also in the description. And if we have a look here, then we see um, what is going on. It says that, for example, here, the different settings, what they do, the randomized person setting determines what percentage of embeddings values will be randomly selected for modification with noise. Yeah, So it takes like the embeddings and add some noise so that the multidimensional vector in the embedded space is a little bit, yeah, changing its direction a little bit. Um, so actually it's like not really then it's, it, let's say the prompt adherence is breaking apart a little bit to add more variations. Yeah. And what it does, it, it uh, you can change whether the noise should be in the beginning of the steps or at the end or completely over the entire process. However, this is not being recommended because this will lead to different images and we will take a look at that just in a moment. Now, I would suggest we can play around a little bit with the value, so let's go back to ConfUI. And now here in ConfUI, we can say what kind of percentage is being randomized, for example, here at 50% or so, and we can also say maybe 30 first, um, with, of course, adjust the strength and also the noise in the beginning of the steps. Step switch over percentage 20, which is not a lot for nine steps, right? So it's like two steps almost, let's say. Um, yeah, let's say we can, we, let's leave it like this. And we can also change the settings just afterwards. But I would suggest let's click simply click on run and see what happens with the image. And then we can also adjust the things a little bit accordingly. And now we see the image at looks already a little bit different, right? So it is more zoomed out. We have some the illumination of the tree a little bit. We have the blue jay still sitting on the tree. It's also illuminated, you know, the feathers look a little bit yellowish from the sunset, which creates some kind of more, let's say, variations. Yeah, we can now click a little bit, let's say two times more to see what's happening. Okay, this is also more playing with the lights. So we have more light variations here, and this is, looks more like the original one. And maybe the last image now, let's see, it also looks more like the original one. But we can randomize, for example, more, maybe 50%. And to switch over to our prompt um, uh, uh, adherence, we can go maybe to switch over to 40. And let's click three times on our run button to see what effect we will have this time. <clears throat> and there we see a more zoomed out, the tree is more in the focus. We see more clouds in the background. Here we have a little bit, well, this failed. The blue jays are very big or the tree is kind of small. And this also is a slight variation of the other one. We can still um, continue also with the strength. We can adjust the strength, for example, to 50. And that way <clears throat> we can create more variations. But this is like really now the fine tuning part. And for example, well, strength 50 failed completely. I think we should switch back. I really didn't test it. So you see, it's not always a good thing to maybe over uh, overexpose the strength in this case. Okay, here at this time, in this way, it is now looking to the other direction, but the head does not look very healthy, not very natural. So you have to be very careful with the settings as you just saw in a mo uh, just a moment ago. But oh, look here, we have now the blue jay looking to the right. We can still increase the percentage, maybe the randomization, maybe let's go to 80 and also let's stay with the 40% at the switch over and let's leave the strength at 20. Um, I didn't expect this kind of thing happening. And there we are with even uh, a more zoomed out image and we can only assume there's a blue jay sitting there. Looks, looks good to me, maybe two more images and then maybe the noise insert we will Take a look at the effects there. Here we see there's so many so much randomization that we don't see the, um, the 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 beach anymore. The same thing also here could be a picture on the beach, but with the sky in the background, and the blue jay now showing us its front. So there's some variation, 
but it's the prompt adherence has been breaking apart. We can now change also the noise and the ending steps. So for example, let's have a look what happens now. And then also to applying the noise for the entire time. Yeah, the prompt adherence is a little bit closer. Uh, but for all steps, I think this should, the, the result should be like for the strength, it should lead to a complete different image. Well, not complete, but yeah, in my doing my test runs, I had sometimes random images popping up, like you just saw with the weird, weird bag. And it's always a little bit, well, that's under Blue J. It's always a little bit difficult to play around with random seeds in a video. Well, I hope you learned something today. If you have other styles that work or do not work, like also the digital art style that did not work in my case, please leave a comment. Yeah, just write down your most favorite styles. I would be very curious to see what you are using in your daily work and also test out the Seed Variance Enhancer. You can combine the Seed Variance Enhancer, for example, also with the XY plot I showed you just a few weeks ago. So go into the playlist, go to the XY plot, take the workflow there, and then play around a little bit. Speaking of which, I would also like to upload the workflows soon so that you have also some kind of repository where you can download all the workflows, but currently we're working on a product. so. It is rather difficult to keep track of everything. Anyway, I wish you a very nice Sunday and a lot of nice images in ComfyUI. And until next time.